X Factor, number 34. Now, again, it's, it's kind of got an interwoven story, like that was in 33, where it's going to have like some of the Inferno in it, but then it's also this showdown between Angel and Cameron Hodge. Cameron Hodge, for those who don't know, becomes one of the, um, mine just went blank. Uh, the run I don't like in the 90s. Uh, the robotic, freaking board type creatures x factor number 34 and death shall fall and here we got cameron hodge he's in this basically like almost like iron man tech type suit that's not as good obviously uh versus angel and at this point he's still known as just death i think after he was the horseman of apocalypse mutants are born with an x factor in their genetic structures that gives them extraordinary powers here are many stories beneath a chicago skyscraper a special organization known as the right plots their destruction now one of those marked for destruction has become the destroyer where is candy southern tell me where you've taken her or pay the price and then angel's just fucking shit up stanley presents death written by louise simonson and then walter simonson her husband was the one who did the uh, pencils on this so here we go you smile face creatures who oppose me seem to be robots, yet you speak as if you were human. You scream as you die, and will die as long as you block me from my goal. Where is Candy Southern? Your lover Candy Southern is here, mutant many stories below. A human who loved her station, who sullied the purity of the human race by her liaison with you. She has been the subject of our right experiments, kept alive only through the ingenuity of right technology. We have sacrificed her on the altar of human knowledge. She is redeemed. I have her now, and I will see her well and truly dead before I surrender her into your filthy mutant hands. Master sent us. He said you his ally. Come, find us. We are here. We are waiting. Said... We should obey you. Man on screen, winged like us, evil like us. Why you hate that man? That is not a man. That is a mutant. What is mutant? Mutants, homo superior, are the genetically twisted children of human parents. Born with a biological advantage over ordinary humans, they emerge from childhood as a butterfly emerges from a cocoon, pulsing with strange and outer powers able to shoot blasts from their eyes or lift freight cars or fly as Warren Worthington, the mutant on screen, before you can fly. These mutants are no longer human and they are no, now humanity's powerful enemies. Ours is a Darwinian world where the fittest prosper and the weak are ground to dust. Homo superior with their more than human potential will strive to displace us in our own world to leave us homo sapiens, the wise men, as extinct as dinosaurs. The right is dedicated to ensuring that survival, while mutants will be eradicated utterly and forever from the face of the earth. Warren Worthington is a mutant, my allies. Go now, destroy him, or his kind will destroy all of us. Demons! The right traffic in mutant lives and mutant blood is on their hands, but are they truly so evil that they are served by demons? Meanwhile, in the sky above Hong Kong, on the other side of the world, look at this, young Peter. My computer is picking up quite a peculiar transmission. It seems that the right has talked to a demon lord and is now transmitting him to a list of children, infants this time. Mutant infants promised for sacrifice, slated for destruction. One of these babies is quite near a little girl. Like Little Red Riding Hood, the bad wolf menaces her. She needs our help. And you would, like any little playmate, would you not, darling boy? Yeah, I like babies, Nanny. They aren't scared of me, not like the parents. That is an added bonus, isn't it? Though we must remember that the parents have good reason to fear. Now run along, hurry, and don't forget to take your little gun. I don't care if your mother was at Hiroshima when it was destroyed. That excuse is over 40 years old. She is a mean, spiteful old witch who... Wah, translated from Chinese. All right, so this is... Uh, yeah, it's Nanny and the uh, Orphan Maker. So that's how like Storm gets de-aged when she meets Gambit, when they first introduce Gambit. It's Nanny and the Orphan Maker. And they collect like 
fucking mutants. They turn them into children and collect them and shit. See what you've done with your shouting? You wake the baby. Now, little darling, come to mama. Who, who are you? It's got a gun. Run. Take the baby. I'll protect. Blam, blam, blam. I have her, nanny. She's real cute. Excellent. Now we must hurry. Demons. Just imagine how very odd. But very, very fruitful. I have captured their list of mutant infants, and we will save them all. A moral lesson, Peter, out of the greatest potential for tragedy sometimes grows the greatest good. But the systematic evil of those humans of the right enables Nanny and her orphan maker to continue their good work. While in Chicago, in the sub-sub-sub-basement, Warren that houses the right's main laboratories. Warren, you had family, wealth, education, beauty. You were already homo superior. What need had you of wings? And how I worshipped him, loved him, loathed them and hated him? Nastir, even before he grew those accursed wings and called himself the Angel. Did you? I had hoped that I was dealing with the realist, Commander Hodge. But now I see that regrettably you are not. Would it be necessary for me to withdraw my support to elicit to cooperation? But you have my cooperation, Nastir, as I have yours. I have transmitted to you the location of mutant children that the right has marked for death to do with you as, as you will. While even now your demons attacked war the accursed angel in my name. My servants who have checked those locations have scant success, Commander. Infants on the list have disappeared. I, I had nothing to do with that. This points rather to a leak in right security, which will be plugged with the body of the informant if I can find him. But surely not all of the children are gone. Those in the orphanage, for instance. The orphanage is filled with older children. I need infants, Commander. Ah, infants. Yes, uh, tell your servants to check the level below the basement. They will be there. I wouldn't cheat you, demon. You nearly match me in evil, Commander, if not in wit. You would cheat me if you could, since you, like all humans, consider other races, even we of the demon race, to be inferior and subject to your will. Our Bible is the proof of human superiority, Nastir, and evolution is the devil's worship. And mutants, little baby mutants? A violent change in nature's plan, counter to the heavenly will, a betrayal of all that heaven promises, they must be destroyed. And to this heavenly end you consort with demons? Any weapon is acceptable in the fight for human purity, and demons are one manifestation of the powers that mankind must harness and control. And so you will use us demons to bring down your angel. It seems that I will have to replace some of my servants. Those are not the wings of an angel. <laughs> These merkin fools. No, now he calls himself Death. You see him as he was, not when I first knew him, but later, winged, young, joyous, beautiful. He thought he had been given the run of heaven, and he revealed it in such pride. I am responsible for the change in him. I had those wings cut off. I hoped it would drive him mad. I set him up to die. But his new wings and grim manner were near as the right can tell you the gift of the arc-fiend apocalypse, regrown, mutated from the wings I had stolen from him. St I know you're there, Hodge. I can feel your cameras watching me. I'm going to dismantle the right, Hodge, as you dismantled my life. I had the freedom of the skies, Hodge, but you stole that from me. You stole my wings. I would have given my soul to have them back. I did. A sorry bargain, Hodge. Remember that when you make deals with demons, these wings with these weapons are flesh of my flesh, and yet they've been regenerated through Apocalypse's technology, twisted to a dark facimile. They're demon wings. They have a cutting edge. They're living death. Their scream gives voice to the darkness in my soul. They feed on fear and anger and hatred, and I am their prisoner, even as they serve me, and they serve me well. They want your death, Hodge. I may not be able to hold them back. It seems you have a fiend by the tail, friend Hodge, and now I will recall my servants and leave you the pleasure of killing him. But you promised me your aid, demon, in exchange for the infants and certain other concessions. Can you deny that you had it? But I, too, have my own agenda. 
and so I must withdraw those servants who remain. To check the orphanage, if all is as you say it is, I will keep my promise, Commander. Pop. He like teleports out. You will not die, and your organization will prosper. That I can guarantee. Yeah, this shit's cool. They got fucking shitloads of dialogue, man. If you read, like, modern-day comics, they, they don't have that much going on. Not a lot of them, anyways. Like I said, you can find diamonds in the rough here and there. Not often. All right. Leave quick. Lord Nastir gives new orders. Go to orphanage. Find babies. Others got lots, I bet. We got none. We just got cut and killed. Hurry, for Master changes his mind. Hodge, are you still watching? You were my friend and you betrayed me. You destroyed my wings. You stole my fortune. You kidnapped the woman that I love. The woman who loved me. You pushed me to the brink of suicide. You made me into death. You have written the death warrant for your organization. Have I indeed? Come, Warren. Face me with your worst. I have studied you. I am ready. While half a continent away, Jean Grey, a.k.a. Marvel Girl, telekinetically lowers herself to the deck of X-Factor's sentient ship. Scott, Scott, I'm back. Artie and Leech are safely in school. And ship, where is Scott? Where, where is everyone? Iceman has not yet returned from taking our other young charges to Exeter. He was going to visit friends on the way back. The Beast is away helping the Avengers. See Exterminators number one, which we covered last week. Uh, in Avengers Annual Night 17. We're not doing that. Um, okay. And Scott? Together, Cyclops and I have deciphered the probable location of Scott's son. Based on a creative interpretation of Destiny's clues and... What? W where is he? Nebraska, we believe. That he is being he hidden in the orphanage where Cyclops was raised. Scott will be leaving for there momentarily. Scott, no, wait. I can't, Gene. Gene, I want my son. Something odd is going on at that orphanage. Odd and potentially terrible. All the more reason not to walk into a trap alone. Iceman and the Beast will be back soon. Wait for them. Wait! No, you don't understand. He must be in terrible trouble. Any second that I delay could mean his life. But what are you doing, Gene? Coming with you. I'm not letting you do this alone. Gene, I... Ship, when they return, tell Iceman and the Beast where we've gone and where they can join us. I'm glad you want to come. I was afraid that you might not want to, that the baby would remind you too much of Madeline and what she was to me, and as much as I need to go, it would be hard to face that hideous place where I spent my lonely childhood all alone. Scott, darling, you're not a child now, and you're not alone anymore. All right. Meanwhile, slink, crash. Oh, that's like a fucking Gatlin gun right there, huh? <laughs> Mini one. Ba -da 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 -da. Sling. Fucking, yeah, Warren Worthington just flying around like a madman. Hodge, they told me you were dead. It seems you were misinformed. Foom, 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 foom. You, however, and your human lover are as good as dead already. Heat seekers. No, slink. Even you, for all your astounding speed, cannot evade them. You are doomed, and you've doomed her as well. No, slink. You took the things I loved most, the symbol for what I was, and then I was nothing. Apocalypse made me into something, a creature of darkness, a living weapon, whoosh, against whom no other can weapon can stand. Candy! Ah, intelligent still, you used your living weapons to slice through mine, though the chain reaction would have killed a lesser being. Good, I wouldn't want you to die too easily. Hodge, why? We grew up friends together. We were friends, Slink. And I followed you around like a puppy. The darts again, the long-range weapons. You seem almost uh, preternaturally pre accurate with them. I worshipped you, Warren. You were all I ever wanted to be. And then you grew wings and flew away and left me behind in the dust. This dude's got issues, huh? How I hated for it, for it and never forgave you and worked to destroy you. I created the right to eradicate mutant kind as I one day planned to kill you. You were such a blith fool. You never even noticed. You actually hired me as publicist for X Factor. And you used that position of trust to carry your message of fear and hatred to other humans. You seek to distract me with your chatter, Warren. Candy Southern and her rescue is your goal. 
but you will fail. I did what was right. Ours is the power and the glory, and heaven is on our side. Candy isn't a mutant, Hodge. Why harm her? She was human, and she loved you, and you loved her. You turned from me and loved her. That alone would be reason enough, but she discovered my secret plan. She was trying to go to tell the press, and so I removed her. I kept her alive to experiment on. You should have heard her curse your name and her agony and her hatred. I enjoyed watching her scream, knowing that she was yours. And now, now she's worthless. Her body is kept alive only by my machines, easily disrupted. Her mind, her soul, is already gone. So it is not philosophy any more than, is it, Hodge? No, it's personal. Sling, ding, 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 ding. Into the rocket launcher? No. <laughs> Candy! It won't help your kind, mutant. Nothing will. Demons will carry off your children. They have promised me eternal life, and that mutants will perish from the face of the earth. Hodge, listen. Stop. Hodge, stop. Listen to me. My wings, I can barely control them. You cannot escape your fate so easily, Warren. For the sake of our childhood friendship, I don't want to hurt you. Come, grapple with me. Learn how you have molded me, and surely as I have molded you. You still don't understand, do you, Warren? This fight is to the death. You think a plea from you will stop me? Your death and your human lovers, not mine. I am armored against you, and the demon has promised me life. Hodge, no! <sighs> Fool, you underestimate the power of evil. Rip. No! How long can she last? Ten seconds? Five? Her heart is slowing. Has it stopped? Candy! Candy is dying. Dying, and still you can't make the hard choice. You'll have to go through me to save her, and you can't. You won't. For all your demon wings, you're still the perfect angel. No! <laughs> An angel I am. No, not anymore. Beware, Cameron, the promises of demons. Thud. Candy! Candy! Are you happy now, Cameron? Is your experiment a success? You have molded me, destroyed me as utterly as Apocalypse ever did. He's in there. Get him. And the right will reap the destruction that you have sown. Welcome, gentlemen. I'd like to introduce myself. I am the Dark Angel, and my name is Death. Who has Scott and Madeline's baby? Find out next issue in... Go to the Orphan Maker, Inferno, minus one and counting. That's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share this out to any and everyone that you think is interested in real Star Wars and real Marvel content. Until next time, see you later.